Hey guys, this is the West Atlanta Bourbon Society, and we're back again. Today we're doing a tasting with a new new bourbon person right here. Ready. I'm Kevin Jablonski. This is Leslie Walker. And I'm Eddie Thomas. All right, we're all members of the West Atlanta Bourbon Society. Please look us up, send us a, a, a message. We'd love to have you to be part of our uh, group. So today we're doing uh, a, a bunch of tastings with some new, uh, new bourbon person. A uh, new member that is actually trying to learn about bourbons and the different types of bourbons. Uh, the first one we're going to do today is the Hostoklers Family Reserve. Now we've done a review on this before. Uh, me and uh, Mr. Thomas here have done a review on it. Check us out. We've done a review already on this. But we're actually going to review this with him as a rye whiskey for him to try a little bit of rye whiskey uh, and take a taste of something that's superb. So, we will pour this out in each other's glasses and we will start the tasting. So, Kevin, with this being a 100% rye whiskey, what are we to expect from the taste? Well, it's rye, so um, I don't want to talk too much about it. I want the uh, new bourbon connoisseur to kind of taste it and tell me what he thinks because he might not think what we think so I want him to give his honest opinion on this this is a straight rye and I'm nosing straight rye so the first thing we'll do is nose it so swirl it around your glass uh, this is a non-chill filtered rye whiskey which means they didn't chill filter process is a process they do to take out all the impurities so they take out all the all the oils, all the you know whatever's in the bottom of the barrel, the the nat that got in there, and all that good stuff, mm -hmm. um, and, and they filter it out. This is not filtered, so this is a completely dirty expression straight from the barrel. We don't want to say dirty; it has all the impurities in it that it should, including the oils, which will make it a real oily uh, texture. I can, um, I can smell the wood. So when you when you swirl it around, you can swirl it around, you can see how far it drips down the glass and if it drips quickly or it drips slowly this one tends to have a lot of legs on it legs is what they call when it kind of drips down real slow mm -hmm. on the glass so now before you taste it what did you smell i smell more nuts earth Maybe wheat or something? It's a rye whiskey, so there wouldn't be too much wheat in it. But maybe it is. Maybe it's sweet. It smells sweet. It smells sweet. sweet? Okay. Let's take a taste. Let's see what it tastes like. What you taste? <laughs> <laughs> what you taste? Right. They want to know, huh? Uh, it's strong. Yeah. It's, um, the aftertaste is way better than the first part. It is sweet. <clears throat> Do you think spice in there? Some peppercorn? It's definitely some kind of pepper or something. Yeah. Um. Don't drink it all. We gotta add some limestone water. To that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Because the first taste wasn't as strong as the second to me. Mm -hmm. All right, that's good though. Here, let's add a little lime uh, limestone water. We've now, got what some. is this gonna do to it? So this will open it up. So, like I said in my previous post, the esters, the alcohol esters, the fatty acid esters, they bind together because it's been sitting. But when you add the water to it, the heads of the fatty acid esters actually attached to the water so it breaks the esters up, it breaks it up and opens it up to different flavors and different notes to it. Three or four drums, that's it? Uh, you've only got a little bit left. If you took a second sip, so we'll give you two. Okay. Just enough to break it open. You're not putting a lot of water in there, just, just enough to open the liquor up. Maybe I'll give you a third here. Hey. We don't want to completely water down the, the whiskey. Just open it up enough to where you can smell different smells. So what do you smell now? Do you smell anything different? He's using a, ta a bourbon tasting wheel here to kind of look at to understand what he's smelling and what he's tasting. Um, it's almost like a candy. Mm -hmm. 
The water didn't help anything. It didn't help anything. <laughs> <laughs> This is something that you definitely slip slow. As you say, it's long legs, but I can still see it coming down the glass. Slip slow. Remember that, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this is only the first one. Wait till we get to the fourth. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a rye whiskey. So it's probably going to have a lot of spice. Mm -hmm. It's going to have like a little licorice, a little black pepper, cinnamon uh, uh, flavor to it. Yeah, more aromatic. All right, it is kind of sweet, though. It does have um, some sweetness to it, uh, more of a, like you said, a candy, which candy goes down into honey, butterscotch, and toffee. Um, but to me, it was really fruity. Um, so it was fruity and floral, too, as well. I tasted a lot of, like, uh, rose and, and berries to it. Um, and then because it's 16 years, I tasted a lot of wood. So I taste that, that toasted oak, that, you know, that walnut flavor to it. An almost walnut flavor. What do you? What did you taste? I definitely tasted the wood. Um, smelled the wood too, right from the beginning. Um, definitely got the spices. After the lime water went in, it did uh, change up the smell for me. Mm -hmm. um, I smelled a little bit more of the sweetness come out. And a little bit more of the fruit. Did you smell any fruit in it, or not really? Not really any fruit. Um, Can't really say that. What kind I of smell more of a licorice. Yeah. Yeah, licorice. Yeah, licorice. Mm -hmm. I get a little blackberry though, or apricot. Do y'all get that, or is that just me? Do you smell a little fruity tinge to it? Lemony, apricot-y? More prunes. Prunes? Yeah, there you go. Hey, that's that's that's, that's, that's like fig, fig prunes, blueberries. It's all kind of in the same blackberries. It's on that same flavor profile. See? Yeah, awesome. All right. Let's go to our next bottle that we're gonna taste. Can you pause it for a second? So the next bottle we're trying is the Old Granddad. It is a high rye mash bill bottled in bond. Um, so it's 100 proof. Uh, the other one was 123.8 proof. Like we said, it was a barrel proof offering. It was non-chill filtered. This one is filtered, but it's bonded. So it's uh, bottled in bond. Which there's some regulations that go to that. I'll explain that in a later post. Um, but it is a high rye mash bill, but it's a bourbon. So it's not a rye whiskey. It's a bourbon just with a high rye mash bill. So the first thing we'll do again is nose it. Swirl it around a little in the glass to kind of get it up on the tips of the, to get the smells out of it. And nose it again. This is more fruity. Ah. Uh -huh. So what do you smell? There, Leslie. You said a little fruit? A little fruity. Raspberry or something. Okay. What do you smell? I get a little bit leathery. I'm comparing it to the previous one we just had. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit more leathery notes coming out of it. I get a little more grain, a little sweeter, like corn. I get, I, I get that corn that comes out of it a lot. A little sweet. Almost reminds me of a scotch for some reason. I'm not sure why. But... Yeah. Oh, the smokiness or the yeah. peatiness of it? The yeah. peatiness of it. So it's real earthy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that maybe what the rye brings out. <clears throat> All right, let's take a taste. Remember to chew your bourbon. So how's the burn on this one compared to the last one? It's not as strong as the last one. There you go. It's not always a bad thing. Right. <laughs> because that was a rye. This is just a high rye bourbon, but it's a bourbon, so it's 51% corn. This one has more of a, you know, a nut taste to me than, than the first one. Yep. Very nutty. It is. Mm-hmm. 
it's crazy how the smell and the taste makes it go all the way different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Almost like a pecan taste. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. You're watching a man develop a little bourbon connoisseur right here in front of you. What do you think, uh, Brother Thomas? The same. I can taste the nuts out of it. Can we nice. try it with the uh, lime water? Yes, let's try it with the limestone water. Limestone water. Three. Not lime water, it's the difference. One, two, three. Yes, we're not putting lime in this. That, that would kill us. Three. <laughs> you want another drop? I'm not scared. Okay. <laughs> Change the smell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Smell got a little sweeter. Not sweeter. Yeah. Now on the other one, we added limestone water and it didn't really change. Either. Right. Right. I think that was because of, again, it's a non-chill filter product and it's got all the oils in it. I think we would have added a little more water to that. It would have would have done the difference. But this one being a chill filter, I think the uh, the actual water did change it a little bit. What do you think? What's the change? It's not as heavy. The uh, straight rye had more legs on it than the bow brand had, but it's good. There you go. It's good. So is this more in your wheelhouse? How do you think about this? Is this something you would like to taste? Or compared to the rye, which one do you like better, the rye or this one? This one, no granddad is, is to me. It's better. Okay. It's better. Okay. But I think I will have to build up. To oh the, yeah, to yeah. But, but right now, right now as it stands, is a new, new bourbon person. If somebody out there is watching and has never drank bourbon before, I would like this to is the first time. Better. Old granddad. Okay. All right. All right. And now we'll try another bourbon. The next bourbon we'll try is. All right. So the next one we're gonna try is the Russell's Reserve. It's made by Wild Turkey Distillery. It is a single barrel, 10 year, non-chill filtered bourbon. So it's just like the first one, but it's a bourbon, non-chill filtered. So it's gonna be oily and have the oils still and the impurities still in it. And this one's 110 proof. So we started off with 123.8, went to 100, now we're back to 110. So we'll see what this one tastes like. The mash bill for this one is majority corn. So uh, wild turkey usually keeps their mash bills really high corn. So we'll nose it first. Spin it around, see the legs on it. We'll nose it again, see what it see what it smells like now. What do you smell there, Les? I smell corn. Like a sweet corn, more like a cereal, maybe. Mm-hmm. I'm still getting the leathery, leathery notes, just not as strong as the old granddad. I definitely smell some of that leather and some of that tobacco. But like yeah. you said, very sweet, very sweet, sweet, high corn, almost a little honey, maybe. Maybe that's what it is. A little yeah. maple syrup, yeah. almost maple syrup, maple syrup smell. I'm gonna make a car scent out of this. I love to smell this all day. Yeah. <laughs> Just have it in my car every time I get Wild it. turkey, send us a car scent. We'll put them in our cars. <laughs> yeah, we ready to taste? We are ready to taste. Whenever you are, sir. Let's taste. This actually has less burn than the uh, 100 proof. Right. The reason why is it's made with more corn. So it's a corn forward spirit versus a high rock. I still got a little spicy. Still a little spicy? Yeah. Was it more spicy or less spicy than the old granddad to you? I think it's more spicy than old granddad, but it's smoother going down. And that could go with the proof. 
again, this is 110 proof. The one before that was 100 proof. So being a new to new to bourbon, you know, seeing that the proof changed 10 percent uh, or, or 10 points, 10 points proof, which is about uh, 20 percent difference. Yeah, it almost burns like the first one to me. Right, right, or five percent difference. Sorry, five percent difference. So the first one is 50 percent alcohol per volume. This one's 55 percent. So it's a five percent increase, which will burn a little more. And you know, it, for new people that don't drink it, you'll still have that alcohol. Mm -hmm. One of the ways you can fix that is swirling it around your mouth more and doing more of the, what they call the Kentucky Chew, which is swirling your mouth, you know, and you're blowing off kind of the alcohol. So as you do that, you get the alcohol more in your mouth, which will make your mouth tingle. The size of your mouth will tingle. Yes, it is now. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you'll get that tingle, but then when you swallow, it'll be less of a less of an alcohol burn. So let's add a little bit of limestone water and see how that changes things in the depths of it. Again, this is a non-chill filtered, uh, unchill filtered uh, bourbon, so it's going to have a lot of the oils and impurities, which will also add to the mouth feel. It'll feel a little thicker. It'll be a little bigger on the mouth than most bourbons will be. We're starting off with probably some wrong bourbons here. We should we should be starting with like Wild Turkey 101, Buffalo Trace. <laughs> no, jumping But we're in. jumping in. We're jumping going in. head in. <laughs> right. We're going to the good stuff. We're at mid-grade okay. and high-grade. Right. We don't mess around. Not at the West Atlanta Bourbon Society. We don't mess around with our bourbon. <laughs> it brought the smell out more. It did bring mm -hmm. the smell out. Car scent, man, I'm telling you. I smell a lot more like butterscotchy. Mm -hmm. I need butterscotch. Mm -hmm. Real sweet smell now. Open up the flavor to that as well. Yeah. Again, when you add the water, it breaks up those fatty uh, acid esters, which especially since it's non-chill filtered, I think that opened up the bourbon to allow the corn to really show. And that shows that sweetness because corn is usually sweet, and that's what that buttery smell is that butterscotch and that, uh, would you say, honey smell to it. Let's taste it and see what it tastes like. Had that change. 100 and what proof? 110. I'm about to say, it's like it's got more. We're hitting with the power. We're not playing. This is grown man whiskey we're doing today. Absolutely. It's got more burn with the, with the lime water. It actually lime did. I felt water. a little more burn yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. A little more burn to it. That one actually didn't even need uh, the limestone water. All right. Well, that's what I think. You know, because it, it, it has the non shell filter and it has that oiliness, the oiliness kind of combats the burn. Once you take that away by adding some limestone water, it can actually make it kind of hot, kind of more like the like the old granddad, yeah. the high ride. That is definitely something that I've seen. The next one we're tasting is very special Old Fitzgerald 12 year. It is a weeded bourbon. It is also a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, which again means no coloring, no additives, no flavor added, straight from the barrel, 12 years old. It is at 90 proof. It was a 90 proof offering. It is a weeder, so it's a uh, more weeded bourbon. It's a weeded expression. Um, it is very old Fitzgerald, handmade sour mash, Asian wood, 12 years, 90 proof. This is a distillery only bottle. You can only get it at the distillery. Um, so we're giving him some of the creme de la creme here uh, to try. And we will leave that right there where you can see it and start the tasting. So we'll ship spin us another around. bottle. Yeah, Old Fitzgerald, Heaven Hill Distilleries. Ship us another bottle. Where are you drinking it? We're tasting it. The smell is lighter than the other. It is. It's a weeded bourbon, so it's going to have a. And it's 12 years old, so it's getting up there in the years. We have a 10-year-old expression that we had. We had a 16-year rye, but this is a 12-year-old bourbon. Uh, you know, bourbon really changes around 12 years. Um, one of the main things I see is at 12 years, it changes. It becomes really good at 12 years. The next change is about 15 to 17 years, and the next one is between 20 and 23 years. 
But the twelve year mark, there's something about that twelve years sitting in the barrel that it just flips to something good. The light switch comes on <laughs> in the <laughs> bourbon barrel. <laughs> so this, this is a really this is one of my favorite bourbons. So I'll try not to talk too much about it. <laughs> I'll let, I'll let the, it's the, the new man talk here a little bit. Yep. What do you smell? I smell leather. Mm-hmm. It smells like it would be stronger, even though it probably won't be than the other two. I'm ready to taste. I'm ready to taste. Let's taste. I got another taste. Smooth. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have as so much as the burn of alcohol in the ovens. Mm-hmm. That's the weeder. So weeded bourbons are usually more smooth and more round. Kind of doughy feel to the... We need to get another bottle of this. Yeah. <laughs> kind of kind of doughy feel to the mouth yeah. feel? Okay. I like this the better of what we had so far. Ah. So he's a weeded man. Better pull out his pocketbook, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and pull out them credit cards because he's going to go into the pathy. The weeded bourbons. Yeah, this is me right here. That's you right there? You said this is wheat. Mm-hmm. Right? It's a weeded bourbon. Mm-hmm. So it's still bourbon. It's still 51% corn. But the other 49 is wheat forward. Yeah, so it's wheat forward. What are you tasting? it? What, what's the notes that you taste in it? Like I said, it's more of a leather taste. It's not as sweet smelling to me. Um, How's maybe the a cinnamon, maybe. Okay. How's the finish on the back end compared to the other bourbons? How is the it, it doesn't burn. It's no burn. Yeah, it's just real smooth going down. It's almost like, what did I drink? It tastes pretty good. It's not a bad after aftertaste. It doesn't have you breathing heavy. <laughs> well, it is 90 proof, so it is the lower of all the proofs of this, but it is also a weeder, so. Put a little bit of limestone water in it, see if it changes it at all. Now, being that it's 90 proof, I usually don't put limestone water or anything under 100 proof. That's oh, this just is my, baby. my personal, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you'll see how that changes the burden. Kind of killed the smell. Yeah, it killed the smell, yeah. I smell a lot of tannins now. Kind of like tannin taste, like you said, leathery tannin, kind of yeah. yeah, flatness. Mm-hmm. And smell a little more spicy. A little more. The water made it a little bit more spicy. Yeah, it did. Let's take a taste. spicy but it's good it's still smooth mm-hmm. the water gives it a little scotchy feel a little, little smoky yeah. taste to it yeah well, I'm still getting strong leather so that's that's, strong. that's what I like about the weedies so the weedies are more you know kind of tannic leather real short finish mm-hmm. so the finish on the end is no burn no you know back feel you can just drink it. It's just something you can we just drink like sweet tea. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why you chose it last. He chose the lineup. So I gave him the four bottles and said, choose your lineup. He said, this is the way I want it to go. But that's the reason why we do that. We do that so you can choose what you want to, you know, your, yeah. your destiny. So. so out of all four, this is your favorite. That's my favorite. So your profile is probably closer to a weeded bourbon. So his profile, as we see, is closer to a weeded um, at this point, we'll go ahead and test some other stuff. Now that we know what his profile is, we'll do a, a focus review with him with something that's in his profile. Uh, check out the next one. It's really special. I'm not going to post it, but it might start with a P. Very special. Check out the next post that we put out. <laughs>